What's happening people and welcome to another team review. My name is Dirty Mike and if you're new to the series then it's all about giving you the ins and outs and breaking down some of the top squads in FIFA 13. And in this EP, we've got the underused Galatasaray. And let me tell you, on paper these guys look good and when you start playing with them, they look even better. And it's been a long time since I've played with two big true center forwards and that's why I'm going to start out this video with a disclaimer. If you're one of those guys where you know you need pace, you gotta have it. You gotta have skillful, pacey players. This squad might not work for you because you're gonna have moments where you need slower buildup, where you got a little bit of patience, and you have to be willing to cross the ball. Have to. I guarantee that at least a third of your goals are gonna come from the wings because you have two huge strikers in Yilmaz and Drogba, and their best traits, their best characteristics is their strength and the way they header the ball. Yilmaz is actually a very balanced striker. He's, he's a lot faster than Drogba and he allows you to do a lot of different things. Great work rates, high for attacking, low for defending for Yilmaz. And I just really like the guy, I'm very fond of him. Finishes everything, so efficient, both of them. And then you have Johan Elmander on the bench. So all three of your Bane strikers are big, big old strikers. And the first formation I used was the 3-5-2. And that was actually my favorite formation with this team. I, I really enjoyed the 3-5-2. I think they have the right players to fill out that formation. And you should be able to score a lot of goals. I scored 37 goals with this team. I'm averaging 3.7 goals per game. That's that's big time. Those, those are some serious numbers. You're not going to lose many games like that. Unfortunately, I did draw a couple just because I started bad in the first half. And then I had to play catch-up. And sometimes that's what happens in FIFA. You can't fall behind and head-to-head -head the same way you can in Ultimate Team. You have less time to make up for it. And you're just not going to get quite as many chances. And the second formation we're looking at is the 4-2-2-2. And that's been a reiterating formation for me. I like using it. I think it's very consistent. It gives you a little bit more space for those center attacking mids. If you guys have guys that can do skill moves well, they have more room to operate. And that's why I like it so much. And in this case, Snyder fits that really well. Five-star weak foot is, is a, a great feature that he's got going for him as well. And then you have um, Robert. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. I really struggle with some of the Turkish guys. But he's your game changer. If you didn't have him, this team may be so different. Because he has a 90 sprint speed, he's very quick, he's agile, and he's got four-star skill moves, four-star weak foot. Because if you can't provide to your big strikers, not going to score very many goals, are you? So you have to have Schneider and um, Robert on the same page, ready to facilitate. But it, it worked out great. I really think that this squad can be... That beast team you're looking for, and then some more. You gotta get used to playing with the big center forwards, though. It's been a minute for me, and I was I was kind of surprised how well Drogba and Yilmaz actually moved off the ball, and then the shooting. Holy cow! You're gonna see quite a few highlights where I score goals from outside the box. And if you guys play head to head, which I'm sure you do, because you're watching this video, that doesn't happen all that often. And deep shooting was on. It was it was all of a sudden it was a possibility. It didn't even matter who the goalkeeper was. If I wanted it to happen, it was going down. And these guys, literally, so efficient. Every time they get in front of the net, it's a goal. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. In the last formation, we're looking at the 4-1-2-1-2. Two, one, two. And as for tactics, I actually ran the default tactics that Galatasaray has going down. And the reason I didn't change anything with their tactics is because after I played the first couple games, I was like, man, I'm scoring goals. Things are working out really well. And I wasn't sure how I wanted to play out this this deal I wasn't sure if I was gonna to need to switch to a one striker setup but I really like the two center forwards I think that it's dynamic and it just it can really F up the opposition they don't have a game plan against two big ass strikers it works good I like it a lot and I went ahead and checked out their custom tactics basically everything's in the middle so always on balanced or mixed except for crossing and shooting where both of those are lots of chances or high and all that means is that once you push into your opponent's final third, everyone on your team is going to push in and they're going to try to help you out. And it'll give you some opportunities with lucky bounces. And I think they support a little bit better because they want to get forward and shoot and score goals like all attacking players should. But the most important thing is that the attacking players you're using, I'm telling you, the work rates are right. And then the attacking positioning is, is ideal. Drogba, Yilmaz, Snyder... Um, Robert, all those guys were always in the right place at the right time. I didn't have to constantly tell them, hey, man, you're out of position. You need to make something happen. This isn't working for me. And that's very convenient 
very convenient. Makes it a lot easier to score goals. And I think my final record was seven wins, two draws, and a loss. And I ended up winning the title, which is definitely a good look. So if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and drop that uh, drop that thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel and follow me on Twitter at Mike's 9 usa I have a lot more content coming for you ASAP, ASAP.